to learn that these kids are special and uh, when they take the field, it doesn't matter how big anybody is, they don't care, they're gonna play their hearts out. Coach Grove, like all of Fisher DeBerry staff, have now been together for three years. And because of that, you can bet the football coaching world has even gotten a little smaller. We really get along well together. Uh, you know, we're a close-knit group. Uh, uh, we love Fisher DeBerry, to be honest with you. That's why we've stayed together for that long. Uh, it's, it's hard to find a head coach in college football today who, uh, you know, really acts like he's still an assistant and treats all the assistants like they're equals. Coach, I know Jim does a great job for you. Oh, boy, what a, what a blessing Jim has been to me. And I thank, the, thank Bruce Johnson for introducing Jim to me. Of course, I knew some coaches Jim had been coached with, and uh, he's just brought such great expertise and just a beautiful family to our family. Fisher, now we're going to meet a young man who had a whale of a ball game yesterday, one of those great linebackers for the Air Force Academy. Here's Lee Douglas again with a look at Ty Hankamer. While in Houston for the Blue Bonnet Bowl last year, defensive coordinator Bruce Johnson told me the most improved player on his defense from the beginning of last season to the end was number 94. Outside linebacker Ty Hankamer, or that's the position they call junk pack at the academy. That's sometimes a linebacker and sometimes a lineman. Now, along about midseason, Ty beat out Chuck Kinneman for the starter spot at junk, and things started to change. I think Ty, as he got confidence, just uh, took over the position. And he has been a, uh, a real, real surprise. And I finally understood the defense philosophy of keeping it in, inside and giving up a little, but not giving up the big one. And it, it just, through experience and time, I, I feel like I've been able to improve. Was there any one game that stands out in your mind last year? Texas game, for sure. That's, I'm from Texas, and that was a, just a fantastic moment in my life to beat the Longhorns in Texas. Ty went up the season 12th on the team with 33 tackles, including seven quarterback sacks and this safety on Utah quarterback Larry Egger. This season, more of the same. Remember this crucial recovery of a Garza fumble in the UTEP game. But Ty tells me there's still room for improvement. Well, I've got to get a lot better, Lee. I've, I've uh, got to get in, in more pressure on the quarterback. Of course, we're in the whack, and we have a lot of passing situations, and I've got to put more pressure on the quarterback. And Coach Johnson tells me when Ty makes up his mind to do something, not to worry. So no need to worry about Robert Ty Hankamer, the 6'1", 220-pound senior from Temple, Texas. When asked about his long-range goals, Ty talks about possibly another WAC championship and another bowl season and something even more important. Oh, <laughs> I still think about that May 28th graduation day. <laughs> but yeah, I'm looking forward to them, but I'm going to make the most out of my last year here. When it's all over and that May 28th graduation day rolls around, what's next for you? Oh, I'm just trying to be the best officer I can in the Air Force. For Air Force Football 86, I'm Lee Douglas. So said coach, a good game yesterday. He had a great game, but uh, his closing comment is what it's all about and what a great officer he's going to be for our Air Force. He's an intense competitor. All right, coach, we're going to come back and take a look at Utah as we will meet Utah next Friday night. We'll have that right after this. Weekend in the whack. A lot of scoring going on, I'll tell you that, John, and uh, that's a typical weekend. Let's take a look, and Hawaii didn't play El Paso. Uh, Iowa might be one of the best teams in the country as they bombard UTEP. Then we've got, uh, hey, look at this. That's the first win by Wyoming over a Big Ten team. Well, I'm so happy for Dennis and his staff, and John, they've done such a great job in a short period of time and had a lot of offense up there at, uh, at Wisconsin. Great win for the whack. We'll talk more about Utah in a few minutes. They had to go to Columbus, and they got creamed by the Buckeyes. Then we've got, this is a tough game right there. That must have been one heck of a football game because I think New Mexico at one time was in charge of the game about 28 to 7. All right, then we'll skip up to BYU as they uh, took care of Temple over there in Provo. Well, it shows you again the quality of defense that BYU's got because, you know, Temple's got one of the best running backs in the entire country. Fisher, Tommy Rotello told me after the game Saturday he thinks playing at Utah on their turf, their stadium, and everything's the hardest place that you guys have to play. Well, you know, uh, they hadn't lost very many football games over there at Utah in their home field, and they do have a, uh, uh, you know, a great record there at home, and uh, of course playing on turf, but it's a Friday night game. It's going to be a little different for us, but hey, the field still be 100 yards long, and it's Friday night for them, too. Well, they've had some problems this year, and but they are a good football you team. You better believe they're a good football team. And, you know, John, like I said last week, uh, to be honest with you, I, I picked them and CSU as to be the two teams that I thought that could contend for the conference championship simply because of the veteran teams that they had returning. All right. Uh, we are about out of time. We'll look forward to uh, 
taking a look at the Utah highlights next Monday night. Good, night, uh, good luck on Friday night, Coach. Thank you, John. We're looking forward to it. It'll be a tremendous challenge for our young men. All right, that's going to do it for Air Force Football 1986. We'll see you again next Monday night. Good night, everybody. <laughs> TV 13, the leader in sports television, presents Air Force Football 1986 with head coach Fisher DeBerry. Sponsored by the First National Bank, McDonald's, USAA Insurance, and True Value Hardware. Now your host, John Eves. And good evening, everybody. Welcome to our show. Final score Friday night from Rice Stadium in Salt Lake City, Utah, Air Force 45, the University of Utah 35. Coach, I've seen a lot of football <laughs> games. I've never seen a comeback like that. Well, John, it was a great comeback, and I'm so doggone proud of our young man. I don't know what to do. It's uh, one of the greatest games that I've ever been a part of, but you know, I think they deserve so much credit because they never lost confidence, they never lost faith, they never lost belief in themselves, in each other, and uh, it was just truly one of the greatest comebacks in, in uh, college football. What'd you say at halftime, Coach? Well, I just told him, you know, just that. I said, man, I tell you one thing, I don't think anything that's going on out there has really been a direct result, even though I thought Utah was playing an outstanding offensive football game. But I really truly thought that we weren't doing uh, individually our responsibilities very well either. And so I said, hey, we, we, all we got to do is sit down and look at ourselves and then, uh, hey, believe. And uh, by goodness, that's exactly what they did. And they came out and played a tremendous football game in the second half. All right, Coach. Well, we've got all kinds of highlights. We'll have that when we come back right after this. Beautiful night and a tough place to play. Well, Rice Stadium's a tough place to play. Uh, John, if you look at the, the annuals, boy, you'll see they hadn't lost very many games at home. And uh, it was a beautiful night. Praise the Lord for that. And it was a beautiful weekend because we got an opportunity to go over and visit Rob Fattis, one of our teammates who was injured in an automobile wreck and is still in a coma over there. And it was a memorable day for, for a lot of us. I know they won the toss. Well, they won the toss. And, of course, they elected to receive. And uh, so that showed the confidence that they had in their offense. And, of course, Chris does a great job here and kicks it down in the end zone. We were concerned about their kickoff return. They've got tremendous speed. Well, Egger had a tremendous night. Hey, and, and you know, what a great, great career. He had through over 3,000 yards last year, 18 touchdowns. And, and, you know, he started right off this way. Even one of the premier passes in the country is no question about that. Here he goes to Holder. And what a great night he had, 144 yards in receptions. And they took that ball, John, and kept it almost for eight minutes there and drove the length of the field. Well, they're up 7 nothing already. Pat Evans, just extra effort all evening. Pat had a great night. We came up a yard short there in third down. Of course, had to punt it back to him. And then, of course, they decided to go downtown and really test it out. And, of course, this is just a great reception here by Holder. And, uh, you know, it, it, when you get big plays like that, it's easy to have a lot of yardage. Eddie Johnson. Eddie Johnson. I don't believe there's a final runner in a conference. And did you see that spur of energy right there? And that, that's the acceleration. And, of course, you know, uh, this got them off to a great start with that big play. And this is something we were concerned about going into the game, John. All right, here's Jimmy, who I thought really did run the option excellently. Jimmy played a fine football game for us, and his execution was uh, much, much better than it was the week before against Colorado State. As a matter of, uh, Colorado State. As a matter of fact, he uh, read it an efficiency of 81% in the game. Going to Tyler Barth, and really your offense is clicking. You just haven't had the ball much. Look at Pat Evans. Well, we, we sort of surprised them a little bit, and they, they had a game plan and uh, sort of surprised us that first series, to be honest with you. But uh, we got locked into what they were doing, and Jimmy read the, read the option there very well and gave it to Pat, and he took, took it in for us. And, uh, you know, we're back, we're back into the ball game. Here's Johnson again, and like you said, as much speed as anybody you're going to play against. Oh, he really does. And Kevin Martin bringing him down there, but, uh, you know, we overran him uh, a good bit. But, he, again, ex explosiveness, acceleration, being able to turn. And, again, uh, of course, they go to Jenkins right here, and, uh, you know, they're back in, 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 in good command of the situation. Well, they're up 21-7. to 7. That's the end of the first quarter, but they're not done yet in the second quarter. But we come out with... Uh, Jimmy here, and uh, he really got hit hard. Well, he really did, and to be honest with you, John, we had to change our protection a little bit uh, in the ball game, and of course, we threw, we threw three passes in this game that uh, had we had just a little better protection and had we anticipated their coverage a little bit better, well, they would have been big plays, and that was one of them. 
of course, uh, you know, they get the ball right back you know, on the interception and then uh, go downtown to Holder again. Boy, what great speed he's got. And then they change quarterbacks and go to their big quarterback, uh, Bill, down there. And, boy, he takes it in. And, of course, now they're really in control of the situation. Well, here's a Tyrone making a nice catch from Jimmy. Well, Jimmy, I thought, threw very, very well. Threw for 61% in the ball game. But again, he reads the option very well, and another great uh, uh, effort by Pat right here, and he takes it in, and you know we're we're back into the ball game, and uh, <laughs> tell you one thing, spectators are getting their money's worth. Did aren't you they? expect this high-scoring game? Well, I thought you know there would be some points on the board, but I really didn't anticipate quite as many as there was, to be honest with you. Well, here's Mark Manafo, and this looks like it's going to be another great great drive for you. You're down right now, 28-14, but this this fumble really did hurt. Well, you. it really did hurt because uh, we we uh, you know it set that play up and. Uh, and Mark took it down. We got there inside the 20-yard line. And Dad, don't you suppose to get points? And uh, Jimmy just left it in there just a little bit too long in that situation. And, uh, and uh, boy, this guy's an all-purpose guy. Bill, their they're, they're, uh, backup quarterback, plays fullback for him also. And here's uh, Eddie Johnson out of the backfield. And, boy, what an all-purpose uh, performer he